Welcome to another Tea Time Show with me, Mark Tillerson. Today's topic is using Merchant Centre rules. Uh, so I recorded a video quite a while back with the old Merchant Centre and today's show is about the uh, how you do rules in the new Merchant Centre. Um, so it's got a little bit fiddly, so we'll work through those. I know a lot of you struggle with, uh, with creating rules and working with your data from your shopping feed and so forth. Um, as usual, if you do have questions, please do ask them in the comments. We always try and help you out. Um, make sure you subscribe now if you want to learn more about Google Shopping and how to do uh, how to get more traffic and more sales through Google Ads for your e-commerce store. There's more coming up, and I'll also put some links to other Google Shopping videos in the description for you. Um, if you are really struggling and you'd like some professional help, then uh, we can have our specialists take a look at your account and your feed for you. Um, just head to tillison.co.uk and contact us by there and we'd love to help you out. So today's show, uh, just very briefly, um, I'm going to show you how to create a rule in the Google Merchant Center. Uh, so we'll start with a simple rule, just setting the condition of your products. Um, then we'll work on identifier exists uh, to work around those GTIN issues, things like that. Um, and then we'll create a custom label and I'll explain along the way how you go about um, working with these rules and working with the data to help you structure your Google Ads and your Google Shopping campaigns more effectively. So heading into the Google Merchant Center, um, you'll find the rules in products and then feeds. You pick the feed and then you head to this third tab here for feed rules and that will list the rules that you have already. So we're going to head straight into create rule. The thing you need to first remember is you have to start with the attribute that you want to set the rule for. So you can set rules um, if title includes black, then set the color to black, and you may be tempted to start with the rule from title. You don't, you have to start with the rule for the attribute that you want to set. So in this case, we're going to go for condition. So condition uh, can be new, used, things like that. Um, and what we do here is we create our uh, source. So in this case, this is just a simple rule to start with. So what we're going to do is uh, we know that all of these are, uh, all of our products are new. So we're literally just going to create a rule to set the condition to new. So the reason you would want to do this is if your Google Shopping feed, for example, just didn't have this data in it and it was missing, um, Google does want this for your Google Shopping campaign, so you may want to uh, put that in there. So that, that's all that happens. So that will fill that um, data in. It, this will also override any existing data in your feed. So just be a bit careful with that. Now you may want to set a rule for some of your products. So let's say some of them had the correct condition and others uh, that field was empty for whatever reason. So what we would do here is we would pick condition and then we would say if it has no value, then set to new. So what we're saying there is, is if it have a, has a condition already in your data, leave it alone. If it has no condition and that field is empty, then set it to new. Now, do be careful with these rules because um, if your product is not new, uh, let's say you have some used or uh, refurbished uh, products, lawnmowers for example, then um, you would this rule would say that this was a new product when actually it isn't. So just be careful when you're doing that. Moving on to a, a slightly more complicated rule, so um, identifier exists. So this attribute is used uh, along with um, GTIN. Uh, there's another video on that. I'll put the link in the video for you in the comments for you. Um, so this is uh, if your product needs a GTIN, then um, what you may have is some of your data has a GTIN and uh, we use those, that comes from your feed, and where it doesn't have a GTIN, we want to set identifier exists to no to tell Google that it shouldn't be looking for a GTIN. So let's start with creating a rule. Pick identifier exists, so remember this is the attribute that we're setting the rule for. Uh, condition, so here we can say that the GTIN has no value and you could create an OR here 
So if GT, GTIN has no value or MPN has no value, then we set identifier exists to no. And that is as simple as, as it gets. So what that will do is it will look at all of your feed data from your XML feed or from your Google Sheet, however you're getting your data into Google Ads. And it will look for any of your products which have no GTIN and it will then set identifier exists to no. So finally, um, I had to do this recently uh, for a, a particular project where we had certain products where we just didn't want to advertise those on Google Shopping. Um, so they still existed in the feed. Um, so what we first did is we set a rule to say uh, products with a particular ID uh, set um, availability to out of stock. Um, fully expecting that then Google would then say, oh, these are out of stock, we won't advertise those, no problem. What Google Merchant Center actually did is then visited the website and crawled the page and said, oh, your page says these are in stock and overrode our data and our rule to say, well, they are in stock because your website says they're in stock and then continue to advertise them. Most annoying. So what we did is created this rule I'm about to show you now. So I'm going to create custom label zero. So in the Google Merchant Center, in your product data, in your feed, you can create custom label zero, one, two, three, four. Um, and what you can do with these is basically whatever you want. And uh, effectively, these are like custom attributes and you can segment your Google Shopping data um, for uh, according to these categories, uh, to these custom labels rather. So what we did with this is effectively said, okay, we want to do these product types uh, but then exclude anything with custom label out of stock. So what we did here is created a condition and then said, uh, so we knew the ID and then we knew that these products had um, XYZ in the, um, in the product ID. So uh, this is a little bit fiddly. So you might, if you were doing this for individual product IDs, if you've got 10, 15, 20 products, this isn't a problem. Um, but if you have uh, thousands of products, then this is a real long way around. I would strongly recommend that you just don't include those products that you don't want to advertise. Just don't include them in your product feed in the first place. But what you can do is just say product ID contains XYZ uh, or contains one, two, three. Okay, so that would be ABC one, two, three, uh, five, for example, and that would work. So anywhere where it says one, two, three, or anywhere where it says XYZ in the product ID. So you could literally go through and go product ID, product ID. You could equally just pick a category and pick or a product type or anything like that. And then we would just say, right, set this to do not advertise, just so we know what it is. Um, and then that will go through and match any products where the ID contains XYZ or contains one, two, three, and then it will set custom label zero to do not advertise. Um, so there are tons and tons of things you can do. There are, those are some fairly simple uh, basic rules that you might want to create with Google Merchant Center. Um, I have seen people creating titles uh, to try and optimize this. So where you have the, uh, the title coming in um, via your feed, but you want to append the brand to your title, the size, um, or some other attributes, you could create uh, a rule where it just says, set for all products, set the title to um, title, then brand, then size, for example, to optimize your titles. And you could also do the same in your descriptions if you would like to do that. So maybe we'll do another show on that uh, sometime. But if you're using this more creatively or you're stuck, I'd really, really love to hear your comments um, uh, to see what funky stuff you guys are doing with rules in the Google Merchant Center. As usual, don't forget to subscribe. There are more videos coming up um, and we'd love you on board.